Welcome to Build with Rob. I am Rob Deerdeck, CEO and founder of the Deerdeck Machine, a one of a kind venture creation studio. We are a company that creates companies by systematically fusing art, science, and magic through a process we call the machine method. The art is the creative vision and constant shaping and refinement of an idea. The science is the proven methods and time-tested fundamentals of business. The magic is that intangible universal luck that provides an unexplainable push towards success. Each guest on this show is one of my do or die partners and co-founders. This show is an inside look at all the companies that we create and the lessons we have learned along the journey. Today, we are sitting down with the one and only Chris Bernie Bernard. He is the founder and CEO of MindRight Good Mood Superfood. MindRight just recently launched after closing a $1.8 million seed round with a group of amazing investors, including Joe Jonas, Marcus Limonis, and the one and only Travis Barker, to name a few. MindRight is a good mood, feel good nutrition platform that creates products to support a healthy and happy brain. Uh, We're going to talk about the process of how we shaped and evolved our brand positioning and design uh, through testing at the earliest stage of development. We saw so many of the assumptions that we thought completely turned on their head from these customer insights. You think brand testing is a waste of time? Well, so did Bernie. Uh, But there's a reason why it's an integral part of the machine method and an absolutely crucial step in creating an amazing brand. Chris Bernie Bernard, welcome to the show, man. Thank you for having me. Build with Rob. Are you excited to be here? I am very excited to be here. Let's just recap what an exciting few days we've just been through here. Okay. I mean, we did it. You know what I mean? It's like of all this time and all this, you know, it's this amazing process of getting all the way there. And then it's live, man. It's a real business that's living and selling product today. Um, tell me about like your perspective of the launch. I, you know, for me, it was remarkable. I think you know, the PR was way bigger than I expected. Right. Closing all of the amazing investors almost like like into the launch, yeah. right? And just added that much firepower to it. But absolutely thrilling and amazing and so, so happy to be yeah. here, man. It's amazing. How was it Such an you? incredible journey. It was incredible. I mean, I I did a post the day of, and I start writing out the investors and the people that are involved. And you're just like, Joe Jonas, Marcus Limonis, Mm. Travis Barker, Ah. Ken Roxon, Adam Censorillo. I mean, it's just, the list just kept going. Yeah. And then- Gotta say the Harders. Shout out to the Harders. Chris and Lori Harder, amazing. They won the day with their post, by the way. They did. Incredible job. And again, like another thing, a great thing about having them, uh, not only influential partners, and, and investors in your idea, but people that are committed and love the brand and 100%. want to see it work. It's like a little bit different level than if they're just sort of investing in something that they don't care about or don't fully understand. You well, know? I'll say that's the difference of the entire project is every single one of them, I would say wholeheartedly believed in it without being sold on the concept. Yeah. They went through that deck and I think they were sold before we even spoke to them. Yeah. So, yeah. And look, so and, 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 and look, process. and I think that's a, a testament to how well t- we developed the brand and it ultimately showed in, in all aspects. And that's really what today's uh, episode is really about is the process that we went yeah. through together, because it is a, a very unique process that I think is different than most people are used to. Like yeah. it's, it's this iterative shaping, testing, evolving, rethinking, fighting, talk. I don't know. Is it right? I'm, what are we doing? Should we do? It's perfect. Is it? And then it's not. And, but then it is. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but before we get into that, you know what I mean? Like I, I really, um, you know, I want to, want to touch a little bit on your history. Yeah. and uh, go through kind of how we came together to develop the brand. But but really, you know, for me, you know, I dub you the mindful doer dyer who has a passion for spreading happiness, you know, because at the end of the day now, you have evolved into the good mood guy and I'm your good mood partner. I love it. You I know? love it. Bert and Bernie. Uh, you know, and, and look, hey, it's, you know, his name is, is Bernie. My name is Rob Burt. Uh, I go by the nickname Rob. I could have chose Bert, and if I did, <laughs> I Bert should've. and Bernie's brain food would have could have into itself. If if I had no other job, 
and me and you went to like the second grade together and this sure. was and we both went on to be brain scientists yeah. and then we developed this brand then it would have been perfect i know you know but it's it, still it's still on the list of yeah, names. it literally makes me smile every time i say burton bernie it feels <laughs> powerful me too you know one thing about like what i what i love about you as a partner is not only do you, do you come from the experience of of the industry that we're we're building this brand together in but i also look at this as like your entire life's experience and everything that you have done has almost led to this moment to create this brand together, you know, and which I think adds this better energy in this, like where you're really committed to like being inside all the layers to make sure that this thing uh, is brought to life amazing and really works, right? I think that's a a deeper level of commitment that's required to that's combined with experience that really gives uh, a, a business a really good shot at success. So I'd, I'd love to hear uh, kind of what led to your experience that got you to here. Yeah, you know, it's it's interesting. We both came from action sports, um, ironically enough. Uh, I spent 15 years as an independent contractor for a company called Burton Snowboards. Uh, I ran a team of my own, it was my own agency. We ran a team of close to 20 uh, employees. And now did you build that company just more out of like, I'm going to sell, like, rather than just be sale for commission, I'm going to run like a team and get commission off all the commission. Was that sort of the strategy that, that led to the development of I it? I mean, no, the strategy was I need to do something with my freaking life yeah. and I don't want to end up in a suit. And this was an opportunity that presented itself. Because what were you, like a snowboard bum? You were just on the I mound. wasn't a snowboard bum. Have I, you ever done a method air? <laughs> of course I've done a method air. Yeah, that's great. Not a very pretty one, but. Hey, and for the audience, a method air is a skateboarding and snowboarding move where you fly off a jump and pull the board up into your back, like in a yeah. sort of thing. So I, I really wasn't sure if he had done it. And it, 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 was it, it, just, it just made it was our ugly. partnership that much stronger. It was to ugly, know that though. You had I, I'm not going to, let's not put, you know, icing on it. It was, it was ugly. But go ahead. You're running so, the agency. Yeah, we're running the agency. And um, before that, I worked at a snowboard shop. Mm -hmm. I put myself through college. Uh, I worked at the snowboard shop. Uh, what was your education in? Uh, marketing. It was it marketing? Marketing. Okay. Bachelor of marketing. And what was the vision back then that like, hey, I'm going to go work Survive. first? But I'm saying from a mark, when you, when you end college, graduate yeah. with a marketing degree, are you like, I'm going to go work at a snowboard company? Like what's your vision for life at that point? My vision was visionless. I got out yeah. of college with no <laughs> plan. It's, yeah. you know, my parents said, go to school. Okay. I went to school. My parents said, go to college. I went to college, but you know, I didn't grow up with anyone in my life that was really pushing me to point myself in a direction that made sense for my future. And it just kind of had, I had to figure it out on my own. Yeah. So as college ended, I, I, I love the snowboard shop. I love skating and snowboarding. It was my passion. I was never good at the sport itself. Like I can hang, yeah. but like I, I could never go pro or anything, but but I love the selling. I love talking about the product. I love being around people that were like-minded, that, that wanted to feel that energy of how excited you were to tell these people that I treated as friends about snowboarding and, and what yeah. was, was going to be the next product for them. So I'm in the snowboard shop and I'm like, All right, it's, it's been six months. I'm out of college. I got to figure this out. Like, Dude, you know, I've got friends going to pharmaceutical. I've got friends that sell Xerox copiers. I'm good at selling. Like, that's the way I should be going. And then the most coveted job in snowboarding is at the time in the early 2000s, late 90s, early 2000s was snowboard reps. Mm. They were kings to me. You mm. look at these guys, they pull up. Because they would show up to the shop like, yeah, they, they, oh, he's got Gate a Porsche. Keepers. I heard, I heard this guy's got this Lambo. <laughs> so, um, you know, to get a job as, as a snowboard rep in the industry, especially for the most coveted brand, Burton, mm -hmm. it was it was impossible. And one day, uh, my rep comes in with his boss and asked me a bunch of questions, and I hammered him on things that the, I thought the brand could do, be doing better. Didn't hold back. Didn't think of any consequences. That night, his boss called me. I can't stop thinking about some of the things that you told me. Would you ever be interested in a job? And I'm like, Fuck yeah. Wait, are we allowed to curse? It's up to you. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, absolutely. And uh, three weeks later, he calls me. Hey, 
we've let go of so-and-so. Uh, there's an opportunity. I want you to come in and interview. And it was like, this world opened up to me and this fire grew inside me. And I'm like, I But got look it. at that though. That's the testament of you shot your shot. I shot my shot. You know, because a lot of times it, it, it can be taken the wrong way. Because a lot of people will shoot their shot and offend right. the boss rather than give insight right. to the boss that led to essentially changing your entire life. One, changed my life. For me, so the process was he called me, there's a job, and I went for it. I went for it as hard as I've ever gone for anything in my entire life. It was my calling. It was my moment. I got to get this job. Interviewed like six or seven times back and forth to Burlington, Vermont, uh, met with the CEO, met with all the VPs of sales. And it just was a process. And it was about four months in. I hadn't heard anything. And I'm just stewing like I got my life's got to start. I got to get going. And I call and I leave a message for the guy like it was pretty aggressive. And it's like mm -hmm. basically at the bottom at the end of the day, it was like, hey. Am I your guy? Am I not your guy? I'm, uh, you know, I want to win. I see opportunity. It's going to happen. I'm your guy. Give me a call. Let's figure this out. If I'm not your guy, just pick up the phone, bro. <laughs> 30 seconds later. That's the call I've been waiting for. You are the new Burton rep for the, the metropolitan area. Wow. And, and so then that evolves into eventually just deciding so, to create your own company. Yeah. It, uh, so he said to me, you need to hire someone. And you need to be on a plane to uh, Argentina for our sales meeting in six days. Wow. I didn't have a passport. Man. I've never been out of the country. Man. <laughs> so I had this guy in mind, uh, great kid. He's now, is this an independent business that you have to create? At, so, had, so, so they're, they're yeah. independent sales reps. So you have to go 100%. and form, what'd you call your company? Uh, Agency Inc. And then- A-G-N-C-Y <laughs> -A Inc. And this was- uh, your very first brand, you. That uh, was my first brand. And then that was what you, that was your, it, that was it for your entire 15 years, correct? And uh, so I got into it. The rep that got fired called me the next day. You will never do as well as I did. He told me. Oh, wow. He set the, he set the platform for me to just like, okay. Yeah. Well, I, I'm going to do what I do. And that first year we doubled the territory in wow. the first year. And, and so tell me the life cycle, like what, how does it like, and then eventually like you had, how big did so, you get it? And then what'd you do? So I company? got it. I got it at uh, around $6 million in sales. They gave me a little, a little nugget. Um, we took that business to about 23 million at its peak. And then when you, and then you just sold that to another sales rep group. <clears throat> no, um, at the time we, uh, so about 2016, I decided it was time to move on. The, the industry was changing. Uh, direct sales became more relevant. Uh, the company was focused on direct selling. And your time is, you know, after 16 years, your time is limited. Yeah. And I decided that I was going to move on. Uh, you know, Burton is contractually obligated to buy you out of your contract and took that and moved on. And then... Then your very next move from that was into literally Buff the next day. I took that money and I invested in a company called Buff Bake. That's amazing. And then you are, you had already known them, and they had presented you the opportunity. Yeah, so, and it was like, hey, this is going to be my yeah, transition. I've been watching it. Uh, one of one of my friends was a co-founder in the company. He also had worked for Burton. I, I trusted him uh, greatly. They, I, I'd watched what they built from nothing. And the part that was missing for me at Burton was I was running my own business with no control on my product. Yeah. I was at Burton's mercy. You know, they're making the product. I can give feedback, but if, uh, you know, uh, a, a cargo container falls off the boat, I'm screwed. I have yeah. no control over the inventory. So the idea of creating the product from idea to market is just so exciting, you yeah. know, and, and seeing what these guys were doing and how, you know, my, my former partner was, was bringing what we had learned in our space to the food space. It was incredible. And it was just, a uh, a really great opportunity to just bring this knowledge to something new. And so then you invested and then immediately became CEO or what yeah, was the that process? was part of, that was part of it. I said, you know, you, it was a, it was a dynamic team to yeah. say the least, um, yeah. with some inexperience, but great people. Um, they needed some guidance and I said, I'm willing to make this investment, but I want to manage the team as, as the CEO and, uh, we'll help to develop the sales plan. We'll, we'll help to develop the goals and, you know, we, we got the business cranking and, uh, it was a great little run. And, and ultimately that's where all the knowledge was formed. And, and was there a learning curve in the beginning? Like, 
because it's now a completely new sales channel. Yeah. It's a you know, the the shelf stability and all yeah. these like yeah. bizarre things that you don't even got to think about right. on a snowboard. Like, right. is you know, I, I got to believe the first couple of years has just been banging into walls yeah. at learning all that. First stuff. six to twelve months, you know, you're you're learning. Uh, you know, the liability on products, the um, manufacturing process, all the things that go into that. But at the core of it, you're still selling a cog. It's, yeah. it is, you know, showing your friends, showing the people that you care about. This is something special I've created. This is why it's special. And I took that, that DNA that I had from, from being a great salesperson into the space. And, you know, we unlocked doors like Safeway Albertsons, Publix, 7-Eleven, Sprouts, Whole Foods. Now, like, did you see any of the product development? Did you have any, like, yeah. like yeah. from beginning to end? Yeah, because that's where my other passion is, is really developing the product, pushing uh, pushing the envelope, trying new things, creating points of differentiation. Now, did you develop the oh, tasty, God. crunchy almond butter wafer sandwich? Um, no. Did you develop that? So let I me, did not. Let me, I, I, right, I developed it in the sense that I was part of the group. It was a group thing that, we, that came to fruition, and I helped... Did you taste it for the first time and think it was like heaven? It was heaven. It was, it was it. All right. So let me set the stage here. Um, when he was a uh, CEO of Buff Bake, we had met, um, I, I believe through, uh, one of our CPG friends. That's yeah. one of uh, Brian's yes. friends had said, Hey, you guys should meet with Chris Bernard. Um, you know, he's got this really interesting product and, you know, just to, let me interrupt you. Yeah. The one thing too is I was getting ready to exit that role. I I'd served my three years. Yeah. I was uh, you know, interested in trying new things. So I didn't know. We got the call from you, like, hey, come come meet Rob. I had no idea why I was coming here. Yeah. That's funny. It, it, it's funny because we weren't it, it wasn't necessarily it was like, hey, he's raising money for for Buff Bake or you know, he's 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 kind of in between. It had all this gray area to right. it, right? right. And this cookie, right, <laughs> you know, this cookie was this almost like a Nilla wafer and just some sort of delightful cream, almost of like the, the taste, the, the way you feel when you eat in a double stuffed Oreo. Okay. But it was the crunch of a Nilla wafer. It was this extraordinary experience, but it was high in protein and low in sugar and like really good for you. Right. So we left that meeting and I, that was it. I had the vision, <laughs> right. It was the vision. We just sort of had this, this, this loose meeting of what it could be. And I'm like, man, we need like this is, this by itself is a, its very own category. This is like a game changing cookie. And I went out and purchased yeah. crunchycreams.com and crunchy and creamy because <laughs> I was like, man, like, so good. Yeah, yeah. Oh, but you it's like, it. but, but I also could begin to see the brand. Right. Right. I was like, man, if you just heroed this single product and made everything crunchy and crunchy creams was almost like, when you heard it, you, you smiled and wanted to, you knew it was delicious, yeah. right? Like, and we brought you back in. Yeah. And. But you didn't tell me why I was coming back. No, it I always It was always big. I why am I oh, man. Look. And don't get me wrong. I loved coming here. But. Look, look, we bring you back in yeah. to hit you with crunchy creams. And it, there was no strategy other than like, does that spark you to want to build a business <laughs> with us called Crunchy Creams? And in hindsight, you know, again, it's it's sort of our process down here where we always just want to meet qualified entrepreneurs, right? And let's have conversations. So we had the first conversation. It was it was it, there was no doubt. Like, you know, when I look at a CEO or, or someone, I'm, I'm thinking of them through those machine seven core capabilities. Are they brand, product, media, marketing, sales, right. ops, or finance minds, right? And it's in, and there's no doubt, like the sales experience ha had, had you skewed towards marketing and sales in, right. in my mind. But it was like, as we continued to talk and know and learn more about each other, Crunchy Creams, uh, although it was a single man's dream and a, a drive, and I know if anybody's out there and has a delightfully crunchy cookie with some sort of delightfully cream in the middle that you want to do a partnership with, go to DerekMachine.com. <laughs> but I'm, 
you know, it wasn't, it wasn't right. And, and yeah. clearly you were, you know, you had made it clear that like, Hey, I'm going to, I would like to potentially explore doing something right. together in the future. Um, because I, I would like to break out and build on my own. Now you got that experience, had your, you know, the agency before now worked as in this new industry, learned it. Right. Now it's time to like, how can I go build my, my own product? And so now, you know, and sort of how our process works is, Hey, when you got an idea for a product, come back to us. Um, and you showed up probably two months later with a concept. Right. And now where, now this concept was a vegan cookie dough. Where did this come from? I was, I was pulling straws. I mean, it was like, you know, something that was obtainable from a, from a production standpoint. Um, it felt like there was some market fit. It felt like something that I was building it for you. Yeah. It's interesting. It felt like something that you would be interested in. Yeah. It wasn't something that I was like. This is it. It's, it's funny, like you say that, because a lot of times, like when people approach me about brand ideas, they 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 try to they try to like box into like what they think fits me right. or what at least is their personal representation of me as it relates to my more mainstream brand. Right. And it's always like it's always the wrong way because I'm really I'm looking at it multidimensionally and holistically of like, right. how can it be a great brand? But I, there was something special about it. Yeah. Right. Because it was still this idea of edible, uh, but bakeable. Right. Yes, so yes, that, that was right. like that, right. that shelf stable, bakeable, shelf stable, yeah. bakeable and raw cookie dough. Right. That was safe. It, it, it was there. Right. So then what our process, you know, this is, you know, in the machine method, that's the discovery process. And we do an immersion. So now, because to me, when I when I when I got that for the first time, when I think bakeable and cookie, I'm like, brilliant. Yeah. This is all, this is taking two worlds at well, you're hitting like three or four worlds at once, you, you know. But but our process is there to protect me from me, right? Because otherwise, I'd have been like, let's go, right? And when we really dove in and looked at the market and looked at cookie dough specifically, because there was a cookie dough wave, like vegan cookie doughs and like edible cookie doughs that aren't, you know, you know, right. the cookie doughs that have the risk of whatever the salmonella. Uh, yeah salmonella that comes with it. And then we had to say to you, hey, man, like, it just, this ain't it. Yeah. You know, it's just the opportunity. It's like crowded marketplace. There's no scale in it. Like, ultimately, um, you know, when, when we uh, assess in those emergence, we try to come up with an opportunity hypothesis mm -hmm. that connects to some sort of liquidity event or path to profitability that was, you know, re really hard to see. And we said, hey, you know, let us know if another idea comes up at the same right. end. And for me, I felt like maybe that was it. I really thought yeah. like you would have like say, hey, you don't get it and you don't get me. That's it. I'm going to make my cookie dough, <laughs> you know, and but, a lot of time had passed. Yeah. Right. And then Brian Atlas, the COO and president of the Deer Deck Machine, let me know, informed me that you had let him know that you got it. I got right. It. Yeah. And that you were going to blow our minds. You were going to blow our minds. And, you know, of course, I'm on some like, man, this guy, he's really, really, really blowing it on the expectations here. You know what I mean? Like now you set the bar so high. Yeah. I'm going to say it, it was probably like three or four emails of like, you guys are going to be blown away. Hey, just check it. I'm it's still two weeks away. You're going to be blown away. <laughs> <laughs> you know? And I don't know if that's exactly how it is, but that my, the expectations. I think you might have ro romanticized that. I did. I did. It's fine. It's but fine. just know it's, it's how I felt where I had already, you had put the expectations so high on me. I was already disappointed before you got here. And then the day came and the presentation unfolded. And, you know, you, you showed up with, a ballistic firearms case, right? <laughs> like a ballistic firearms. If you can imagine, this man walks into the silver. office with a silver and black, like, you know, you put can, I don't even know what I want. You put I was in tempted it. to put the, uh, the handcuff on there. Man, look. I, I almost did. Look, it had the, vi it was like, and I'm like, what? Like, and so in my mind, this is like this guy's briefcase or something. Like, what's, what are we going to do? Shoot some content here? <laughs> like, and, you proceeded to present the concept for Feed Your Brain. Yeah. Instantaneously. The moment it was sort of walking through the evolution of, of food and, and that journey of, 
uh, better for you that has landed most recently on functional and the probiotics and the collagen. And then look at this world, this world of, of brain health and, and adaptogens and nootropics and how they're all in this collision of these two worlds. It was almost instantaneously. Oh, this is it. Yeah. This is it. Like, but you were, you were stone face until the very end. Oh, really? Yeah, you were. <laughs> Just poker face. No way. Your wheels were turning. I knew your wheels oh. were turning. Oh, shit. But That's like, really you funny. were just, oh, man. Just and locked then, you I, off. Yeah. And then Brian would kind of look over at you just to see where you were at. Like, yeah. What's and then the vibe what I- like here? Like, <laughs> cause he was like, I think I felt he was really excited about it, but he was like, yeah, taking cues from you to see where you were at. To, keep that poke yeah, that's funny it, it, look it was it was when you know you know yeah right it, yeah. because you had really listened to us at white space and and the unique value proposition we got to look at all these like like you know is it a platform like where's the scale like right. there wasn't the platform in the vegan cookie stuff right and mind-blowing but then you opened up that case and there it the was end. There it was, at bars, bites, butters, all of it. And it's like, okay, this guy, man, he's like, what? You already- Coffee creamer. Oh, yeah, the coffee creamer. Oh, man. And But, man, the first thing I went for was the toasted coconut bite. Yeah. And there it was again, heaven. It was one of the best tasting morsels I had ever eaten in my entire life. And the, it was done. Forget about like all the research. We still had to go through discovery and immersions and go through this entire process of our machine. But it was like, we are here. You did it. Not only did you uh, blow my mind, but you blew my mind two or three times further than I had already set the expectations that you couldn't even blow my mind because you set it too high by multiple emails even if it was only one. Um, but that's my my version of how we got here. That was it. Um, and really, you know, fast forward, uh, you know, really what I want to kind of get into today is sort of the process that we went through yeah. to actually, you know, turn it into the brand that is Mind Right Good Mood Superfood. Uh, because we, I think we both learned a ton along the way. And it was a um, extraordinarily interesting and process uh, from beginning to end, right? So I think the number one thing is we like Feed Your Brain felt really good, but it was just unclearable right? Uh, from a trademark perspective, which is always, you know, uh, you know, a no, no. And, and ultimately, you know, my, my game and my love is like, let's, That's let's make it do. something, right. you know what I mean? And so it's like, that was, it's, that was definitely a placeholder. Yeah. And, and even though it, but it was still a good placeholder, right? You know, so we began almost like just more of an iterative one-on-one creative process to start it, right? Where it was like, I was really on this like happy brain it was okay like what's the the output is like you're happier right so it's that early stage of shaping sort of what it is and you know i don't what are some of the other names that we were we were pushing around it was you know i knew it was this is brain yeah this is brain food yeah that was that goes back to that sharper sort of um this bar saves lives zone you know i i was pushing it more towards i'm always i always try to push it to the more Right. right like how do you make it feel more like mainstream and then i'm always looking for like how how does the name connect to the value proposition of the actual product right the feature benefits of this product and how does that tie to uh the name that can tie to ultimately um the way the media feels and how you create your marketing so so even when i begin to look at it i try to see it like that and as i was going through that were you connecting with me trying to connect all those dots or did it feel still still feel blind to you the way I was approaching it? No, it didn't feel blind at all. I think, you know, one of the things I love about you and the team here is the validation process to, to, to just make it fit yeah. and feel right is something that I've never experienced that I've never created a discipline around. It's a great process. Yeah. So for me, it's like, you know, at, you know, feed your brain. It just didn't, it didn't hit. And yeah. the way that you were going about trying to, create this name and, and find something that made sense. It was, it was a great process. Yeah. And look, and it was really about how do we make it a verb? 
Right. You know, right. and so, you know, and really when you build a brand and, and a lot of people, you can do it in a lot of different ways. You know, most people, if you bootstrap it, uh, you got a designer homie right. that makes the look and feel and throws a tagline in there. How's that feel? You know, like uh, then all the way to hiring an agency to do your brand guidelines and your brand Bible. And inside there, it's your your logo, your word mark, your topography. It is uh, your your sort of strategy that they call it's either your your why how what it's your vision mission position. This is this more sophisticated way, if you will, uh, to begin to anchor down and build your brand soul. Right? right, essentially what your brand is going to stand for, and that that scales out over time. But even that is a difficult proposition, right? Because you're most people that then spend the money to hire an agency will just let the agency kind of deliver back to them. Hey, here's your brand, right. right? And for me, as I discovered with you, it's like, man, that's you got to it's an iterative process, yeah. even with a great agency to get it into the right place, you know, and so we you know, for for us, we knew to do it the right way. We needed an agency. Yeah. And ultimately, you had a relationship with a great agency that we hired, right? And, you know, we we already, we, we wanted our happy brain direction and this sort of direction. But, you know, they really said, hey, let's do a name study and and present you a ton yes. of different names, yeah. right? So So luckily, we went into that process wide open. Right. Because normally, you know, I had to even check myself right. because, you know, I can be overwhelming as it relates to being a creative force of pushing too far in one direction uh, on founders and and partners. And luckily, you know, it was the right balance of let's push and pull till it till it gets in that right place. But they delivered a giant list of names. Right. And do you remember when you first saw the name Mind Right, if it stuck out to you or not? I do remember. It was third on my list. Yeah. Third on my list. Yeah. It was a sleeper, man. It was a sleeper. It was a sleeper. Yeah. It, it made it up in there, but there was something about it without connecting it to like the cultural value of get your mind right. right. You know, it felt we, we were so fixated on brain. We just were so, it's like happy brain or brain, brain. We were so brain that the word mind, we would debate whether or not it felt disconnected to the concept of what the ingredients and the overall nootropic side of it would be, right? It began to like, man, it just started building and building and building. And, and initially it had some trademark issues, but man, it it is one of those things. A lot of times, sometimes you'll choose a name that's, that is just completely wrong and now you're stuck with it you know what i mean and sometimes you'll you'll think it's wrong or you think it's okay and then and then it grows into being extraordinary and i think as we began to now to develop it out that's what really really started to happen because then we were able to connect like being mind right is right. actually what happens after you have all of these uh, actives that are nootropics right. and adaptogens in your system actually form uh to create uh what it is and so we're fired up yeah we're fired up we're here well now. it's two parts to it it's it's a physiological effect of the product Yep. And for us, it's becoming a lifestyle. It's yep. a way of life. Yeah. And I think that was an important part of finding that name. How does it fit into our into our daily lives? Yeah. And also, now we went into building that strategy. We started molding it around us. Right. We started molding it around us. Right. We started, oh, it's like they the agency now is pushing us towards, you know, the unstoppable blend. Wow. Right. Because we're like, who's our consumer? Who are we? We're like entrepreneurs and hardworking moms. Yeah. Right. Like badasses. You know, it's like we're all just. Stopped. Yeah. Unstoppable. It's unstoppable. Yeah. We're un in the it. unstoppable blend. Right. And I will never forget. I purchased nootropicsuperfood.com and felt like I hit the lottery. I got that thing for $5.99, yeah. right? And was like, this is it. Mind right, nootropic superfood. Nootropic superfood is like the future. It sounds like some futuristic, like this stuff's going to change my life. So here we are, mind right, um, nootropic superfood. 
with the unstoppable blend. <clears throat> and we, you know, what we debated as we were driving forward with the design is like, oh, like, do we want a big brain or a small brain? And we decided, hey, we're, we're right here. Part of our process is we really uh, want to be able to test and validate yeah. uh, concepts. And we were a little bit behind, you know, a lot of the stuff that we were building with the machine method was being built while we were building this brand and testing was one of them. And, and we jumped off and said, Hey, all right, let's test this. And we got put together the brief laid out sort of a bunch of different key, different value props of and features and benefits of the products so along with some design stuff and, and sent it out to, to get feedback. And it literally changed everything. Everything. You know what I mean? And, and, and what, like to you, what was the most surprising aspect uh, for you when it, when it came back, all that initial data? Everything that we thought we loved everyone hated right <laughs> <laughs> unstoppable blend it was uh, like two percent of every of the people surveyed oh, like man. the unstoppable blend i mean bro they i mean you look you look you're unstoppable blend because we were like this is amazing it wasn't we weren't like kind of into it right. this was our brand we're this we're killing it and and the one that marked me i'm talking like Six percent were like literally, it was like eighty percent negative feeling of nootropic superfood, right? right? Like, oh, it, that's right. You know what I mean? It was yeah. just like, oh my, unstoppable Lord. and nootropic superfood, just you know, bombed. And if somebody would have just told us that, we would have been like, nah, nah yeah. you just don't get it. You don't, you don't get, get it. us, right? right? Yeah. And seeing that feedback and understanding, and then seeing why they didn't, and then when we began to look at it further, um, because there was like happy brain and, and good mood and these different, we were putting these different benefits inside there and they love superfood, right? This idea that superfood really meant healthy and a really high quality product. And then the thing that got us was, it was just, you know, some homies, two men right. just pushing, pushing the unstoppable nootropic superfood. And this product over indexed with females. Yes. Right. And and for us, it was this look in the mirror of like, stop it, stop, you stop, you stop, right? Like be more inclusive. Like, you know, it was this big awakening. But that those sort of three pieces now shifted everything. Yeah. Right. Because then we 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 were like, whoa, we got to really let's let's tone this thing down to be to be much more neutral. We were going way too male heavy. Yeah. Uh, you know, happy brain blend is now like, OK, this is amazing. This is how I want to feel. And, you know, I, I remember to this day, man, we're on a group call, a weekly group call. And you just sort of sheepishly, you know, uh, threw out good mood superfood. You know what I mean? And I'm like, what? Well, I'm like, and you're like, really? I'm like, no, we're like, bro, this is genius. This is, you just cracked it. This is it. And when I was going that hard, what, like, what was your initial thought on Good Mood Superfood? Like you weren't, you I were like. I was using it as a way to describe that product structure. Yeah. Because we, we had talked about, you know, what does the platform look like beyond food? I used it as a placeholder. Yeah. You know, and, and, and the one thing that you're missing, too, about that process is the other thing that indexed really highly was, you know, while cognitive function was important, uh, memory, uh, being focused, those things were really important. The thing that came back most resonating was people wanted to feel good. Yeah. They yeah. want to feel good. They want to feel good from the foods they eat. Food as medicine was really important. Yeah. Um, and that's when we started really diving in and understanding like, okay. We've got ingredients that could actually help us, you know, bring about those feelings. Right. And double down on, you actually have it. Right. Right. It's, it's the consumer is giving you the insight that what you actually have is stronger and more powerful than the way you're presenting it. Right. And, it, you know, a lot of the, the great entrepreneur books will tell you, you know, get out of the room, you know, like go test it. And it's just, it's so real because it wasn't like we had a big room. We had a lot of cooks in the kitchen. Yeah. And for me, 
you know, I'm the loudest cook. Right. And I could shape a shape into the wrong direction. So again, why this, you know, testing is just this amazing, amazing, inf- insightful process that that really gives you self-reflection and gives you the insights to reshape your instincts to make something even more profound, you know. As we're sitting here talking about it, I'll let you know that the testing portion to me was a waste of time. I didn't want to spend the money. Yeah. We had a limited amount of budget to put towards, you know, everything that we wanted to build. And to me, I knew what we were doing. I had the experience. I had, we felt good. I, you know, Rob's a great creative. I'm a great creative. We've got this. Yeah. Yeah. And then when we (laughs) got that thing back, Man, oh, man, thank God you oh, tested. So, oh man, it makes me so happy to hear. Yes. Because it's the truth. It is the it's, truth. It's, it's the type of individuals, the type of do or dire mentality that just self-belief and relentless work ethic and, and everything that makes up us also makes us feel right about stuff we feel good about on right. our instincts, you know, and 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 it, it changed my life. Right. It has changed my life on how I look at every time. Like even when I look back on things I didn't test, I'm like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like I should have I we should have at least got that in front of some right. people. And, and and again, like it is invaluable because not only did it shape its way into, you know, and again, I want to say it again. When you hit us with good mood superfood, I felt like I just felt the heavens open up. Yeah. Right. Because it now I could begin to see the brand across everything. It then drove into the look and feel and colors. Let's go with these beautiful neon, like sort of faded colors, like and make it tonal, like, oh, it's coming alive. And then, you know, the big one too was trying to think, how do you make the content? How do you make the content? And it's like, it should just make you happy. That's it. And then when, when using Pure Vita as an example, yeah. as a brand example, right? Because, you know, when, when I would go to their website, it's just everyone's everyone's happy smiling right and it's like time. it's like man this is good. yeah this is like the brand the feeling the ethos and and i think another thing that that can't be overlooked when you're developing an amazing brand you you have to know that it's this iterative shaping process and even if you hire an agency like the agency's just going to get you far enough along to where you got to get it in the hands of your own creative and brand director to begin to bring it alive. You know, I would even equate like great brand Bible and guidelines as almost like a financial model. And, but your business doesn't start till, till you actually start selling the stuff and and have an operating model, right? Like you have to actually bring it alive. And, and Courtney really did that. You know what I mean? And, you know, and to to give you context, like as we were developing the brand, uh, he had a a resource that was an outsourced resource that he had used in the past. who was a great designer, creative mind. And she came in and started to bring the thing alive and add the soul to it. Take, take all those things and really like hone the messaging and get everything in order. And that's really when it truly came alive. And, and that, to me, is this incredible process of shaping, evolving, and testing that that created mind dry good mood superfood that allowed us to not only um, you know make us happy, but but allow us to go out and raise capital with all these amazing, influential, um, awesome partners, but then launch this brand. Uh, for a successful launch straight out the gate. And really that foundational work that we did for this business will ultimately be what matters most in its success that it's going to go on and have. I truly believe that. Totally. Okay. But, you know, I want to, I want to explain one of the most bizarre things I've ever had to experience in business. <laughs> We're business partners. And we are off and running. We are going to create this extraordinary brand together. And I get an email from the senior project manager of the Deer Deck Machine that says, hey, guys, just want to give you a heads up. Chris uh, doesn't actually go by Chris. His real name is Bernie. And it was, what? So I, I, I try to say it out loud. 
Bernie, right? So you've got a you've got a Chris. You've built this entire yeah. image of a man, and and now he's a Bernie. It it was this insane, insane idea and concept of transition. Immediately call Brian Atlas, CEO and president of Dirty Machine. I'm like, can you believe this? This guy's name. Do you, do you see this? Yeah. I mean, how are we going to call? I mean, why do you how do you call a guy Bernie? How do you even transition? So number one. How come you never told us that your name was Bernie in the very beginning? Because you don't come into a room sharing like, oh, my nickname is Bernie. But like my, how? My whole but life. But that's your name. Would you just sh- And then why didn't you just tell me one on one? Why didn't you say, hey, <laughs> hey, Rob, partner, we're doing, hey, we're doing, we're bound together for life now. We're doing this company. I just want you to know as a friend. Right. My name is Bernie. I got here. I was probably nervous. And I just, you know, (laughs) hi, I'm Chris. Nice to see. My entire life, I've been Bernard. Everyone has always called me Bernard. Man. There's dogs named after me. There's there's all sorts of- Do you know what the meaning of Bernie is? Mm, It means a strong, brave bear. Did you make that up? No, it's real. Really? That's real. Strong, brave bear. That's me. And so I I thought to myself, because, you know, Bernie- is, you know, you got Bernie Sanders, he's 82, yeah. but it's like, it's legend. you know, even when we were in those first meetings, like it was everybody yeah. in chaos. Chris Byrne, Chris, uh, Byrne, 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 Chris, Chris I mean, Byrne, sorry, sorry, uh, uh, Bernie, Bernie um, <laughs> this guy, Bernie, it was just, you I said, mean, you sent out a mandate that everyone had to call me Bernie. We did, well, we did, we, your name, we were, we were basically all said, this is this man's name and we all struggled. <laughs> I'm talking, it was, it was, it, it was probably four months of struggling. It's almost like the LA chargers from the San Diego chargers for sports announcers, but like, oh man, it was this insanely brutal transition that now is like totally comfortable. It's my guy, Bernie. It's Bernie. Burn, 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 burn. Right. It's so easy. But I, I did some research because I'm like, when did they, when did Bernie peak? Right. So I literally looked up the data for named children, boys in the United States of America over the last hundred years. And Bernie peaked. Bernie peaked on the name list in 1937, Ooh. okay? And Bernie fell off of the list. Doesn't even make the list anymore in 1972. So there's like, wow. <laughs> literally, like your nickname. So, so moving forward for my girls, it'll have to be a family name. Yeah. Bernie. No, yeah, yeah. Like, this is my son, Bernie. Yeah. You, second, third, fourth, and fifth. Yeah, if you want, because you didn't name your son Bernie, did you? No. Okay. Leo. Yeah, Leo. you could have. You should have. You should have. Okay, no burden that to your daughter's no, my, sons. My entire life, <laughs> I've been Bernard. And then when I met my wife, she just started calling me Bernie and Bernie and Bernie. Okay. And then all of a sudden, everyone starts calling me Bernie. It okay. Just, it just stuck. All right, that's sweet. And you know, well, I love love. So, yeah, that, I love. so that works. I love that you love love. Look, love, love. And I love love so much that I love hearing a story of a man who got a nickname from his wife. Yeah, that's it. Because mine is Boo, and it'd be weird <laughs> if you called me Boo. We're still a lot of time to do that, so we could, we'll we'll see what happens. You know, I just want to say yeah. I'm super thankful to be partners with you. Um, I do believe that in that process, you did prove yourself to to have all those seven core capabilities, and ultimately that creativity and that nonstop perpetually optimizing, getting better, thinking of all the edges. What's one more thing we can do? What's one more side? Living in the corners. Like living on the edges. You know what I mean? Like those edges are where this game is won and you are in them. Thank you. And I look forward to this entire journey because it's going to be amazing and ultimately extremely successful. Well, thank you for the opportunity. It's been amazing. And watching you, looking at, you know, looking from the outside in it, the discipline that you bring to everything you work on. It's inspiring um, across all facets. And the one that stands out to me the most is your discipline, not only in your work, but the way you put that discipline into your family. And that's yep. super important to me. Yep. So I appreciate that. Just two hardworking yeah. dads, man. That's just it. trying to make a living. There's a couple good mood dads. <laughs> the good just mood work. guys. <laughs> all right, Chris, Bernie Bernard, thank yeah. you so much. Robert Stanley, dear, thank you very much. All I appreciate right. it. 
If you think you have what it takes to be a doer dyer and partner with me and build an amazing company, or if you want to join our growing community of machinists and be the first to test our new products and help us manufacture amazing, go to DeerDickMachine.com. If you haven't listened to the Deerdick Machine Primer, I encourage you to go back and listen to episode one, which will give you insight to our machine method to really enhance your overall experience of listening to these episodes. Make sure you subscribe to Build With Rob wherever you join us. YouTube, Spotify, Apple, and anywhere else you get your podcasts and videos. And most importantly, remember, you got to create the vision in your mind. You got to create the plan to prove to yourself it's possible. Then you've got to attack it with everything that you got. See it, believe it, do it. We'll see you next time on Bill with Rob.